Thanks. My name is Hubert Campbell, and I'm a retired surgeon, so in this field I'm a lay person. Um, and my question for you is, somebody who is now in their late 40s has been chronically depressed over the years. Uh, difficult to treat myself. Um, becomes a delusional and paranoid delusional over the last couple of years. Why would that be? What could that just happen under treatment, under meditations? And the second aspect of it is what can be done? Can we recover? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, the first thing you know, is in my bio, it says I do so-called psychosomatic medicine. Psychosomatic medicine these days, among other things, has, is, is really it, the practice on the interface between medicine and psychiatry. A lot of that is in the somewhat older population. Now, I don't know how old your son is, I suspect. I'm sorry? Okay, he's a little young for this, but I guess I'll make this general statement anyway. Um, one of the things that we are learning is that mental illness makes medical illness worse, and medical illness makes mental illness worse. And particularly if you're developing some kind of cognitive difficulty, it's going to make the, med the, the mental illness look worse. So one question that I would ask is, is he sure or are you sure that the other aspects of his health care are optimally managed. In other words, is he having, because, well, because he's old enough to begin to be in this age range, is he, and because of his background with the chronic mental illness, which makes him more susceptible, are you sure he's not having any cognitive difficulties that would contribute to that? Secondly, are you sure that he's not having any, any heart disease or anything like that that might contribute? Is he getting sicker in other ways? That could make it worse. The other question I would have is, has he had the full plan of panoply of treatments? Uh, uh, there's probably a broad range of opinion in this room about whether ECT is, is the angel or the devil of the world. I understand that. But for someone who is truly delusional, if they haven't had ECT, they should. Now, I don't know if he has not I'm not asking, but I would just suggest that. Um, you know, I'll tell you, if I had a delusional depression, I'd have ECT. <laughs> I would too. Um, so, um, just to take that in a slightly different direction as well and not talk about any specific individual, but it's also the case that there's a natural history, a progression of illness with many of our mental health conditions. And so separate from this specific case, you know, for things like <coughs> recurrent major depression, bipolar disorder, um, schizophrenia, there, there's a, there can be a progression in illness, even severity, without treatment. So um, one of the things you know, we're always interested in, in partnering with NAMI with is really education. And education in this regard for, re for recurrent depression means get treatment, and if you've had multiple episodes, it's important to stay on something that can keep you from having the next episode. Because episodes over time can become deeper, longer, and more difficult to treat. If, yeah, if I had depression with a, any break from reality, any kind of symptom that we call psychosis, hallucinations, fixed false beliefs, delusions, I'd go for ECT. Um, the response rate is remarkably good for that specific illness and for many other things for which other treatments have not been successful. Um, so, you know, one other place to always think about um, looking locally is, you know, what other resources are there? Um, I was actually talking to someone this morning at the, at the side of, of a soccer field, a guy who's a psychiatrist. <laughs> who happens to be in the treatment refractory depression clinic at the University of Michigan. So in addition to ECT, there are, you know, there are other, uh, other modalities, other types of biological treatments available now, including he's involved with transcranial magnetic stimulation. It's another way to affect how the brain works when other kinds of treatments aren't working. 
So, you know, I would just end with hope. There's still hope. And it's always good to keep looking for, you know, what other opportunities are there as well. We've got time for one more question. Back here. Um, uh, I'm a, a, a internal medicine doctor. I work with psychiatrists um, trying to optimize the general health of psychiatric patients. And to address what the gentleman asked earlier, um, I have to say that, just like in all the other communities, there's discrimination against psychiatric patients among doctors and healthcare providers. So uh, I'm ashamed to say that, but it's true. Um, and what I would do is, um, is I would urge family members of patients with psychiatric mental, mental illness to be a really strong advocate for getting the same screenings and treatment that everyone else gets. Just for example, colonoscopy is at age 50 or earlier. Uh, I've, I've encountered so many cases of, of my patients who have got no screening, no attempted screening, and um, they're 59, 64, um, and, and the providers just don't take it seriously um, as they should. Not, not all of them, but too many of them. The same with cardiac screening, diabetes, making sure that they don't have diabetes. Um, there's a real tendency among health, some healthcare providers to just um, treat the mental illness as, you know, they look at you as a person with mental illness and then everything else just sort of drops off. So you really have to be demanding sometimes and insist that your family member gets a colonoscopy, assuming that they're willing to do it and want it, like everyone else. Um, yeah. <laughs> we all want a colonoscopy. <laughs> yes. And also, a lot of the, the as, as you guys mentioned, the, the uh, antipsychotics and antidepressants cause a lot of other problems, like um, lithium and kidney dysfunction, uh, checking, monitoring levels of lithium and, and valproic acid. If you don't monitor those levels, patients can become toxic. And you don't even know what's going on, but their their mental health suffers as a result. So, um, so anyway, be demanding and ask questions and be polite when you do it, but stand firm. <laughs>